بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اسلام علیکم پاکستان ویل وی آر کمنگ ٹو دی اینڈ آف آر ماڈیول اینڈ رائٹ ناؤ وی ہیو سین سنس دی ایڈوینٹ آف ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی دا فنومنا وچ ہیز ڈومینیٹڈ ایوری ونز لائفز انڈیویجولی ایز کمیونٹیز ایز سوسائٹیز ایز کنٹریز ایز انسٹیٹیوشنز اینڈ آرگنائزیشنز اینڈ ایز اے گلوب از کووڈ نائنٹین کووڈ نائنٹین ہیز چینجڈ دا کارپوریٹ گورننس پیراڈائم اینڈ دی کنٹیکچولائزیشن آف کارپوریٹ گورننس ایٹ اے نیشنل اینڈ گلوبل لیول کووڈ نائنٹین وین اٹ اسٹرک ان دا لیٹ ٹوینٹی نائنٹین اینڈ دین اسپریڈ ان ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی وی سی دا ہول ورلڈ چینج دا ورلڈ کیم ٹو اسٹینڈ اسٹل تھاؤزنڈ آف پلینز اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ اسٹاپ فلائنگ روڈس بیکیم گوسٹ ٹاؤنس میٹروپالس بیکیم ایم ٹی پیپل بیکیم confined to their own homes. Individuals feared each other. Large conglomerates and corporations became empty overnight. It seemed as if the world had come to a standstill. The first wave of COVID-19 spread fear, spread uncertainty, and spread a collapsual phenomena and that phenomena was that everything has to change so ladies and gentlemen with the advent of covid of 19 things change and businesses change thousands and thousands of businesses across the world closed down technology took over real work Work from home was a new phenomenon. We see that in all of this, new businesses emerged, new powerhouses emerged, some businesses multiplied, most businesses not only diminished, but were vanquished. That is what COVID-19 basically did to the corporate world. Now, in all of these changes taking place, definitely corporate governance also changes. What we see is that boardroom dividend discussions ranged over a series of considerations. The equity and symbolism of returning cash to shareholders at a time when employees were being laid off or furloughed. So again, there was this difference. There was this clash of decision making. Should the shareholders be given back their cash? Should people be given golden handshakes? Should salaries be slashed and benefits taken away? Should people be laid off in huge percentages? Should there be a convergence of products or should projects be closed or products be closed totally? What should happen in all of this uncertainty? The logistical world faced innumerable problems. Those problems are prevailing today. We see that Supply lines have disrupted. We see that there is a dearth of chips around the world. We see that there are products, but there are no buyers. And there are sellers. Products have basically accumulated, or there are shortages of product. Commodities cannot be transported. All of this is taking place, but again, Where should the money be parked? Where should it go? Is a very big question which has emerged in this post-COVID scenario. The potential future opportunities gained or lost by following or going against government calls for dividend cuts. The reputational and signaling effects of maintaining versus suspending or reducing the dividend. So again, governments have called out for the betterment of communities. But are corporations listening? Are corporations willing to make their shareholders suffer at the cost of the stakeholders? These are questions which to this date we don't have any answers, but we have to look into the future through corporate governance ensuring that the best option basically emerges. The expectations of shareholders and the different proportion reliant on dividend income and the company's cash positivism and position 
and strategic plans have to be amalgamated together for a better tomorrow, maybe at the cost of sacrifice of today. We see that the new environment is characterized by an increasingly complex set of pressures and demands from various stakeholders. The factors are complicating board decision making and challenging the stakeholder centric model of governance, the shareholder centric. So, post COVID or the COVID 19 syndrome has made things more complex and complicated, is challenging the sharehold centric model of governance, and is also creating more challenges and pressures and demands. How do we balance all of the stakeholders? without damaging the interest of any one particular group is a very big question which emerges in this post COVID-19 scenario. A richer model of governance that puts the health and resilience of the company at its center, society depends upon well-functioning companies to meet its most basic demand. So again, more responsibility, like I mentioned earlier, more social responsibility and more environmental responsibility, maybe compromising or cutting down on profits. Creating that balance between shareholders and stakeholders is now inevitable. And in this post COVID 19 scenario, there is even greater need to bring everyone on the same table and create harmony of governance. Do away with the dissipation of conflict and of ambiguity. Incorporate and inculcate more clarity. And make sure that implementation is simple and to the point. And that is the future of COVID-19 and also the new technologies which are emerging. How they can be assimilated at a greater scale at the large, medium and small level of organizations to create a better national economy and a better global economy. We also see that the pandemic has shown the importance of each and every stakeholder group to a company's ability to function. Customers have lost in the pandemic. So again, we see the cost or inflationary factor coming up. Things becoming unreachable. Uh, we also see that workers have also lost in the pandemic. I was mentioning earlier, there has been a supply chain disruption throughout the pandemic. And then most importantly, insufficient capital and funds during the pandemic have changed the way business is done and how corporate governance can be implemented. These changing dynamics are putting a lot of pressure on the boards, on the shareholders and on the stakeholders. It is necessary that we create standardization with adaptability and flexibility and can create a corporate governance mechanism which would balance out the different irregularities and the disharmony which exists in this post COVID scenario. And that is the future of corporate governance post COVID 19. Thank you so much.